so you love wine. If you love wine, you've got to know about Italian wine. And if you've got to know about Italian wine, you definitely have to know about Tuscan wine. Let's spend a few minutes talking about the great wines of Tuscany. Now, no doubt when I say Tuscany, that conjures up images of rolling hills, sun shining, lots of sunflowers and beautiful castles. A little bit like the movie Under the Tuscan Sun, if you remember that. And no doubt, Tuscany is a beautiful place. It's got historical reference, great rolling landscapes, beautiful castles, and of course, fantastic wine. So if you're a wine lover or you're learning about wine, you absolutely need to know about Tuscan wine. In this video, I'm gonna break down five wines from Tuscany that you really need to know about. Coming in at number one is Chianti. I'm not picking Chianti as number one because it's my personal favorite. I'm picking it as number one because it's probably the most well-known all around the world. There's no question that when you say Chianti, people think of Tuscany. People may think of checkered tablecloths, cafes, pizza, pasta, and those are good associations for the wine that we all know as Chianti. If you're a bit older like me, you might actually also associate Chianti with a stout bottle that had a round bottom and sort of a raffia wrap around it. That was the quintessential Chianti back in the day. And to be honest, Chianti at one point wasn't exactly associated with world-class quality. But a lot has changed since then. And now there is amazing wine being made in the Chianti region. Chianti is made primarily from the Sangiovese grape. And Chianti itself is a really large zone. So depending on where you are in the zone, the styles of the Chianti that you're drinking will vary as well as the composition. Within the broader Chianti area, 70% of the wine must be made from the Sangiovese grape with 30% permitted to be other varieties, such as these ones here. And if you're in the Chianti Classico DOCG, 80% of the wine must be made from the Sangiovese grape with the other 20% being allowed to be made from the remaining varieties that I just discussed. Now, you can get up to 100% Sangiovese in a Chianti or Chianti Classico, but remember that the range is anywhere from 70 to 100%, depending on the wine that you're drinking. Chianti is a very large region, as I mentioned, and so quality can vary. It's important to know the producers that you're buying your Chianti from and the specific area that you're buying your Chianti from because some areas are associated with better quality. For example, Chianti Classico is considered to be the historical heart of the region and therefore associated with a sturdier, more age-worthy, technically a better wine. Okay, so let's move on to wine number two. Wine number two is Brunello di Montalcino. Brunello di Montalcino is made from Sangiovese grapes as well, just like Chianti Classico, but it must be made from 100% Sangiovese grapes. And those grapes must all be sourced from around the town of Montalcino, which is a beautiful hilltop town in the rolling hills of Tuscany. Brunello di Montalcino wines must also be aged for at least two years. Brunellos are world-renowned and really loved by a lot of wine lovers. They're sturdy, complex textural wines that are usually extremely age worthy. They come with a high price tag at times, but it's usually worth it. And they're great partners for your steak and other deep dark red meat dishes. One thing to know is that a lot of Brunello di Montalcino producers make a Rosso di Montalcino as well, which has been aged for less time and can be a more affordable option if you're looking for one from the area. Coming in at number three is Vino Nobile di Montepulciano. Vino Nobile is also a Sangiovese-based wine. It must be made from a minimum of 70% Sangiovese, which must be sourced from the hill town of Montepulciano. These are also excellent red wines that can make great pairings for red meat, but they also have a little bit of a lighter character than Brunello di Montalcino because they're not made of 100% Sangiovese and they're often aged for a little bit less time. So they can also be great pairing partners for hearty meat-based pasta dishes and meat-based pizzas. Number four, another red wine, venerably called the Super Tuscan. The Super Tuscan is also a wine that contains Sangiovese, but it is often not Sangiovese dominant. These wines tend to come from the coastal area of Tuscany, and they're considered to be mavericks in Tuscany, or at least they were when they first were invented. The reason this is so is because Super Tuscan wines are usually made predominantly with international varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc being amongst the leading varieties that are often used in a Super Tuscan, with Sangiovese also being part of the blend, but not the most predominant grape in the blend. 
These wines are generally considered to be more Bordeaux blend in style and they can be lovely wines. There are some really, really high priced Super Tuscan wines and most people will associate the term Super Tuscan with a high price tag and for good reason because some of the biggest names in this category do produce really age-worthy, really expensive wines. But one thing that's important to know is that a Super Tuscan does not necessarily have to be expensive. Remember that a Super Tuscan is a wine that has more international varieties in it than it does Sangiovese, or at least has the presence of international varieties in it, along with the Sangiovese. That's what makes a Super Tuscan, not the price tag. So you can actually get some really affordable Super Tuscan wines at your local liquor store and get a bit of a sense of what these Bordeaux type blends that are being generated in the Tuscan region of Italy are like. They're wonderful, age worthy wines, and they do really well with a range of foods, particularly anything that's rich and more structured like a red meat dish. And number five on the list are the white wines of Tuscany. Now this may come as a little bit of a surprise because most people associate red wine with Tuscany. And there's no question that there are definitely more red wines in Tuscany than there are white. A lot of the white wines that are produced in Tuscany are consumed locally. Having said that, there are some standout examples of dry white wines being produced in the region. In particular, Vernacchia di San Grimignano is a really interesting dry white wine that's very aromatic and crisp and can be a beautiful accompaniment to chicken, fish, salads, and is really lovely, I find, in the summer season. There are other really great examples of Bianco or white wines, in particular blends that are driven by Chardonnay, and then there would be other white grapes included, such as Trabiano or Malvasia or even Vernacchia. And the region is also known for growing some Sauvignon Blanc, so that's a little bit harder to find. But I would definitely recommend trying to seek out white or Bianco wines from Tuscany as well. And just to slip one more bonus in there, I know I said I would talk about five wines, but there is a sixth wine that I wanna to bring to your attention, which is called Vin Santo. This is the sweet wine of the region. Vin Santo is made from dried out grapes and it is delicious. So if you can find some, definitely add it to your list of Tuscan wines that you know about and have tried or want to try. And there you have it. That's a brief list of some fantastic wines in Tuscany that you should know about. Now, let me end off by saying that's not the complete list. There are other really fantastic wines being made in Tuscany, and maybe that's a part two video. But this list should definitely get you started in terms of exploring the region. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Wishing you peace, love, light, and of course, great wine. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh,